We got a milk cow. This is Clementine. She's basically a dream come true. We searched and searched and searched and searched the internet, asked friends, anywhere you could possibly look for a milk cow. We have been for the last months and months, probably almost a year, um, but it was the Lord's timing and she's exactly what we were looking for. She is three quarter Jersey and a quarter brown Swiss. She was bred back on March 19th and she, well, she calfed January 4th or in early January and that was when Tennessee had that big freeze. So she lost her calf during that severe cold weather that we had and we had all that snow for that long time. Um, but she was bred back on March 19th and she'll be due again in January. December, January. We hand milk, um, Brandon and I tandem hand milk, but we just have it in our schedule to do it that way just because it gets it done faster and she, this first week that we've had her she's been a little impatient with us super patient for the most part like considering all the change um, she gave me a hard time the second day when Brandon had to go back to work so we've we've um, made it a point that he's here when we milk just because so many kids are running around and I need his help <laughs> so um, we hand milk normally I'm the one that washes and dries while he gets all the grains and everything together we do give her non-GMO dairy ration from our friends at Taylor Family Farms just while she's in, this is our milking stanchion, but it's not really, just while she's being milked. Y'all might recognize that. That is definitely not a milking stanchion. We tie her up to our kids' mud kitchen that the boys made out of old concrete forms. And as long as there is grain or alfalfa or something yummy in her little feed trough, which was the kitchen sink for the kids' kitchen, <laughs> She is content and stays to be milked, which we are super grateful for. That was one of our big boxes we needed checked. A really patient milker that would stand well um, with no need for a stanchion, just because we wanted that kind of a gentle cow. She gives about two gallons a day right now, plus or, plus or minus, mostly plus. <laughs> um, but they say when she's fresh, she gives close to three. So we'll have plenty of milk come early winter. We milk into two stainless steel buckets, um, and we have two because we're slow. So we want to be able to have one to dump into in case she steps in it or whatever. So after we've milked her all out, it takes us about 35 minutes, um, we rub her down with dynamite cream. It's on Kate at Venison for Dinner's blog. It's just aloe vera with a bunch of essential oils and um, we rub her whole udder down with that to keep things flowing as a preventative measure. And then we spray her with 
this fly spray that's from Prairie Homestead, Jill Winger, her blog. All natural, again, just apple cider vinegar, some essential oils, and um, an, a, like an, a fat, so like a vegetable oil, but I use avocado oil. So we spray her all down with that, so that, because it's black fly season, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And actually, I need to correct myself, we get four plus gallons, with a, a little bit more than four gallons a day. Two gallons every milking, at least. Um, so we're in the milk right now. I've made so much cheese and butter the last week, but such a huge blessing for our family because believe it or not, we go through so much milk, whether it be cheese or yogurt or cream in our coffee or butter, like we go through it. So this milk cow is gonna be a complete blessing for our grocery budget. It's gonna offset a lot of those costs for us, um, especially because we have so much grass right now that um, we don't have a huge hay bill or feed bill. Um, yeah, of course we're gonna have to buy hay because winter always comes and um, we need that dairy ration to keep her in the stanchion. But we're even weaning Miss Hazel over here. So she's almost off the bottle completely. I actually think this morning was her last bottle. So we'll even be um, putting her out on hay and grass. So yay for that. <laughs> but we're all done milking now. I'm gonna take this in the house to get it strained up and I'll show you how we do that, maybe, depending on how messy my kitchen is. We basically have the cows just in our front yard. <laughs> this is right when you drive up to our house. This is our driveway. We're at the end of a end of the road here. And we have gave them the whole front area because it had the best grass with some shade trees. So that's where they're at now. And we're just gonna keep moving them on down because we have plenty of grass that way. And then Brandon is going to mow or brush hog this back here again for them um, and let it grow up so that they'll have plenty of grass over there too. So like we guessed, we got two gallons and almost a quart, which is great for us. Um, we are gonna get these into the freezer for about 20 to 30 minutes to get them to 40 degrees as quickly as possible, hopefully within the next um, 40 minutes. And then we'll transfer them to the fridge without them being frozen. Um, that is our quickest way to uh, bring, them, bring the temperature down, which is what you're supposed to do with raw milk, um, says all the people. We are working on a new system though, and I'll keep you guys updated on that. But that's it. We get, like I said, um, four and a half gallons about a day, which is great for our family. And we are just so excited to have her as a new addition to our family. She is gonna be with us for the long haul, and we are so thrilled. All right, guys, that's the latest update on our homestead. We have a lot more coming at you, though. So thank you for hanging out with us and for welcoming Clementine to our family, and I will see you on the next one.